Hello and welcome to this how-to video. Today, I'm going to show you the basics related to chorus play. I will cover everything you need in order to use chorus play yourself, going through many settings and explaining how to set everything up. First, you will need to download the mod from GitHub. You can find the link in my pinned comment below. Download the mod and place it in your mod folder. Before we get started, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you will not miss any of my upcoming videos. Once you have downloaded the mod and started the game, make sure you have selected the mod in your save game before launching. To activate course play menu, simply right click. That is the default setting and it will bring up this small menu. Here, you can see which vehicle you are currently sitting in. You can also see the vehicle's name and what task it is assigned to. Right now, it is set to field work. At the top right of the menu, you will see a small help book. This lets you read through all the available information about course play, or you can stay here and follow along with this video to learn the basics step by step. Now let us take a look at the global settings. Course play driver wages. This determines what your hired AI workers will cost you. Scroll through the options and choose the one that suits you. Automatic repair. Here, you can choose if your vehicles should be automatically repaired over time, or disable it if you prefer handling repairs yourself. Fuel threshold. When the fuel level reaches 5%, the vehicle will stop. What happens next depends on your setting under wait for refueling. If disabled, the worker will end the task and leave the vehicle. If enabled, the worker will stay in the vehicle and wait for you to refill it. But remember, you will still be charged wages while they sit idle broken threshold. When your implement reaches 100% wear, the worker will stop. You can adjust this to any percentage that fits your preference. Stop harvesting when it rains. Enable this if you want your workers to automatically stop harvesting in wet conditions. Allow workers to destroy crops. Toggle this if you want to decide whether AI workers should damage crops when driving over them. Moving to the user settings here, you can customize the interface to suit your preferences. In expert mode, you will have more options available, so you can experiment and see what works best for you. One important option here is action event help. With this enabled, you will receive notifications if, for example, a harvester is full, or if a seeder runs out of fertilizer or seeds, or if a worker is done with the job. Another key option is show info text window. This is the small green menu you see at the top of the screen. This is where all course play information messages will appear. Back in the user settings, you can decide how it should behave, and you can choose to have it always active, only show up when there is a message or completely hidden. You can adjust these options however you like to fit your own play style. Now, let us move on to the vehicle settings. Here, you can choose how the course should be displayed. Show all waypoints, show only the current waypoints, show only the start, and stop points, or hide them completely. There is also a fuel save option which will automatically shut down the engine while the worker is waiting for something. You can also set whether the worker should avoid driving through crops. Another key section is the tool settings. Here, I recommend setting raise tool to late and lower tool to early. For example, when mowing grass, the implement often lifts too early at the end of a row, leaving a small strip of uncut grass Setting it to late prevents that. The same applies when lowering tools. If it is set to late, the implement may start too late and leave a gap at the beginning of the row. That is why I usually go with raise tool late and lower tool early. At the bottom, you can adjust the speed settings. How fast workers are allowed to drive while working in the field, turning or compacting silage. Now let us move on to creating courses. Open the Course Manager, where you can create a folder structure to organize and save your courses. For example, we can create a new folder for Field 4. Back in the game, let us drive onto Field 4. Using the menu, we click Create Job. You will see that the entire field is automatically highlighted as long as you are standing on the field with your vehicle. If you are standing outside the field and press Create Job, you will notice that Field 4 is not highlighted. In that case, you can use the Field Position button. Simply click on the field, and you will see the same little marker appear as before. 
then choose the direction you want the tractor to drive. For starting options, you have first waypoint. This is exactly what it sounds like, the very first waypoint on the course. Last waypoint. This does not mean the very end of the course, but rather the last waypoint where you previously stopped working. Nearest waypoint. This will start the course from the closest available waypoint to your vehicle's position. Under fieldwork settings, you can see the work width of the implement, which in this case is four meters. Right now, we only have one tractor and one implement. If you were to use two tractors with the same type of implement, you could select two under multiple tools. My recommendation when running multiple tractors on the same course is to keep switching lanes set to deactivated. If it is activated, they will cross each other's paths, which often leads to collisions, especially if they are started close together. Field margin lets you adjust how close to the edges the worker drives. If there is a fence or boundary close to the field, you might want to reduce it slightly into the negatives so they do not clip the edges. If you have extra space, you can increase it, but I usually leave it at zero. Number of headlands can be set anywhere from zero to 40, depending on how many headland passes you want. You can also disable headlands completely and just have the vehicle drive straight up and down. When headlands are active, you can choose whether to start on the headland or in the center of the field. In the headland settings, you can pick if you want sharp corners or rounded corners. Sharp corners create very square turns, while rounded corners are smoother, but may leave small missed spots in the corners. If we generate a course with sharp corners, you will see the path is very blocky with clear 90 degree turns at the edges. If we instead choose rounded corners, the tractor will curve around at the ends. Just remember that this can leave a little bit of the field missed in the corners. Further down, most of the settings can usually be left as default. Sometimes when generating courses on very large fields, the course will fail to generate. In those cases, it often helps to manually set the direction rows and choose the angle the vehicle should drive. Alternatively, adding or removing a headland can also solve the issue. At the very bottom, you will find island settings. This is useful if you have an obstacle inside the field, like a hill, a tree, or a rock that you want the AI to drive around instead of straight over. If we now generate a course with rounded corners here, you will see it listed as a temporary course. By selecting first waypoint and pressing play, the tractor will drive to the starting point and begin. To see all the waypoints, click the eye icon next to the play button. The yellow eye shows the start and stop waypoint. The blue eye displays a limited number of waypoints ahead of you. The green eye shows the entire course at once. Clicking on temporary course will take you back into the course details. You can also see how many waypoints the course contains. In this case, 325. If you click on that number, it will take you into the course manager where you can save the course. For example, we can save it as field for cultivating. Back in the game, let us stop the worker mid course and switch over to a cedar you will notice that the previous cultivating course is still loaded. To reset it, go into the course manager and use clear current course. Then you can select field four again, set the driving direction, and check that the settings are correct. In this case, the cedar has a working width of 4.4 meters, so we generate a new course for it. You can also choose to start the job directly after generating the course in the menu. The AI will calculate the path and head straight to the first waypoint. Then, go back into the course manager and save the new course as field for seeding or whatever you prefer. When starting a job, it is usually best to drive onto the field first. This makes the setup much smoother. The system also provides a time estimate, showing how long it will take to complete the field. To demonstrate how the notifications work, let us pause the worker, skip to the last pass, and start the job again. Once the worker reaches the end, you will see a notification appear in the top corner saying finished work. When you get back into the vehicle, that notification will disappear. Now, you might be wondering, what if I do not have predefined fields on my map? In that case, Courseplay includes a recording tool. If you detach your implement and press the record button, you can drive a custom route around the area you want to use as a field. Once you finish the loop, it will create a custom course.
For example, here I drove a small circle, and when you stop the recording, it will ask you to save as a custom course. And now, let us make a small bend here at the end so we can move on to the next step of this how-to video. If we switch over to create job, you will see that course play field one has now been created. From here, as long as no active worker is assigned, you can move through the menu to access hotspots, create job, active workers, and finally custom fields. When you click on a custom field, you can either rename it or choose edit custom fields. This will bring you into an overview map. If we zoom in, we can clearly see the course we created earlier. Here, we can fix the odd section we made by using the move waypoint option. When you hover the cursor over a waypoint, it will highlight in light blue. You can then simply drag it to a new position, adjusting the shape of the course until you are satisfied. You can even move the starting point if needed. If that does not look good, you can instead choose add waypoint. For example, if you want to insert a new waypoint in between two existing ones, just click where you want it placed. After adding it, you can switch back to move mode and fine tune its position. There is also a very handy tool under advanced settings for moving multiple waypoints at once. Simply select the first and last waypoint in a section, and then you can drag the whole group out into the field to reshape the path. This is especially useful if you want to expand the field boundary or make broader adjustments to the course. Here in the advanced settings, you can experiment and really get to know the tool. When you press escape to go back, you will be asked if you want to save your changes. If you select no, you will simply return without saving. Another way to create a custom field is by opening the custom fields option. At the bottom, you have draw custom field. Right click to set the starting point of your custom field. Hold left shift and right click again to create straight lines, forming a rectangle as you go. Continue placing points until you have outlined the field exactly as you want it. This is very handy if you are working on a map that does not have predefined fields. Then you can use AI to help you create new fields. If you do not hold shift, you are free to draw any shape you like instead of straight lines. Once you are finished, press Z to close and save the custom field. The system will automatically assign it a name, such as Course Play Field 1, and the next one you create will become Course Play Field 2, and so on. Now, let us move on to the last part of this how-to video, silo compacting. I have prepared a bunker silo here with some silage in it. As you can see, Course Play has detected the nearby silo and selected the correct type of work. Press the target icon to open the menu again. Use target position to choose which direction the tractor should drive and silo position to select which silo to work in. Direction into the silo lets you decide if the tractor should drive forward into the silo or reverse in. Waiting for unloader gives you the option to have the worker wait at a parking position or inside the silo. I recommend filling the silo completely before starting the worker. This way, you do not need to worry about this setting. The last option is stop at 99% compacting. If this is deactivated, the worker will continue driving even after reaching 100%, and you will need to stop the worker manually. That is why I always keep this setting activated. That covers the basics of how course play works. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel so you will not miss future how-to videos, or check out my more roleplay style series and episodes. And of course, remember to hit that like button if this video was helpful for you. Thanks for watching.